Well, hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to Wake Up Well. Uh, we, this week, have been tracking through the whole theme of covenant and our identity that we find as followers of Jesus, that we actually take on a brand new identity of being joined uh, to Jesus in covenant relationship. And uh, today I want us to focus on um, a, a, a picture of covenant, which is the marriage covenant, um, which is a picture that the Apostle Paul speaks of a number of occasions in terms of our relationship to Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, Paul says this to the, to the Corinthian believers. He says, for I betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. In other words, he's saying, guys, in me telling you about who God is and me telling you about what Jesus has done on the cross, effectively what I'm doing is I'm, I'm inviting you into the invitation from God himself to actually be wedded in the most intimate of unions with Jesus, with Jesus Christ. And that becomes our identity. In, um, in ancient Jewish culture, when a man and a woman got married, there were actually two ceremonies. There was uh, the betrothal ceremony, which was the legal uh, ceremony and then any time up to a year later was the the marriage and that was um, where the man and the woman came together and it was uh, the both the spiritual and the sexual union of the man and the woman and and we see that in in the example of uh, Joseph and Mary in the the accounts of the birth of Jesus at the beginning of the gospel accounts where we see uh, Joseph when he realizes uh, Mary who he uh, was betrothed to, he was engaged to, many of our translations say engaged, but there was clearly this sense of betrothal being so much more than just our cultural understanding of engagement. There was a legally binding thing, because it said when Joseph thought that Mary had cheated on him, he wanted to quietly divorce her. There was a legal, legally binding nature to their relationship already. And this is what you and I get to experience right here in, in, in the present when we respond to the invitation of relationship with God, that we actually get to be betrothed to Christ. Now, in ancient Jewish culture, when a man and a woman were betrothed together, there was an exchanging of vows and a legal documents. So it was a legally binding thing. It was recognised that there was a commitment and there was responsibility. And the bridegroom was committing to provide for all the practical needs of the bride. So think about it. Jesus is, is chosen to enter in to a legally binding relationship with us where there's commitment and there's responsibility on both sides. And he is choosing, Jesus is saying, come and take, uh, take up being betrothed to me and I will provide for all the things that you need, your practical needs. Secondly, the, 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 bride, sorry, the bride would take the man's name from that moment. So when you and I step into covenantal relationship with God, with Jesus, we get to take his name. We get a new name and we get a new identity. We have the family identity and all that is his becomes ours and we get to share in that. And it's this beautiful, powerful picture of being born again, isn't it? Of dying to our old identity as a single person and being made alive in this joint union with Jesus, who is the exact representation of all that God is. He is the full manifestation of the deity of God. Just let that sink into your head and into your heart. Of This is who we are as followers and as, as believers in Jesus. And what would happen after the betrothal is the groom would return to live with his father and would prepare a room, a separate room on the side of his family's house that at a later date when the marriage happened, he would go and, and, and get his bride and take her back and uh, into this place. The father says, doesn't he? Like Jesus said, I am going when he, when he was going to the cross. He said, I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to prepare a room. I'm going 
going to prepare a place for you. That's precisely what he's doing. He's, we're being betrothed to him. But he doesn't leave us on our own. He sends us his Holy Spirit as a seal, as a sign, as a promise of the fact that he's returning. And in the here and the now, we very much get to have our identity of carrying his name, his presence, his power, all that he is within us, knowing that there is a day that where he's returning and the marriage will be uh, will be uh, consummated. Friends, we are the bride of Christ if we are following Jesus, and this becomes our identity. We become one with him. It's a legally binding thing. And so therefore, there's a certain element of responsibility to that. There's commitment and there's responsibility. He commits himself to us and he, he says, I will be responsible for all your needs. But we also have the responsibility of honouring him as our, as our bridegroom and submitting to him, knowing that he can be fully trusted and that he wants the absolute best for us. Therefore, we seek to walk in obedience to him as one who can be trusted. So friends, I want you to know, and I bless you today, to have the revelation of knowing that we have union with Christ as a man and a woman have union together in marriage. And that is what we're called to. But also let's choose to live up to the responsibility of being a good partner in that covenantal marriage relationship.